Some of you, you are taking too much time trying to convince people to love you that do not matter. Some of you are taking way too much time tolerating and trying to get people engaged that don't matter, that don't care, that are never ever going to help you get into your destiny. I felt like saying to you this week, if somebody can walk away from your life, let them walk away. You shouldn't have to convince anybody to love you. If they can walk, let them go. If they leave you, it means they're not attached to your future. We spend so much time wasting energy because we're so upset about being rejected by people. Joseph didn't need to tell his brothers about this dream. Either it was from God or he heard wrong. Either way, it was premature to share. And I watch Christian after Christian get excited because they go into their prayer closet and God starts to give them a dream. And before it's ready, they step out of that prayer closet and they look at people and people try to set them in their place and then they feel rejected and they quit. You got to see this today. Because the truth of the matter is, is that how many of you know that like they wouldn't have cared if there wasn't favor on Joseph's life? Like how many of you know, like, like, like the reason why they were getting upset, the reason why they were getting irritated was because they were jealous of what was on his life. What if I told you that some of the rejection you have been facing in your life, it's because people are jealous of what's on your life? What if I told you that the rejection is simply an indication that you got favor on your life? God is getting ready to do something in your life. You just got to understand there's more to know. Come on, somebody. There's more to know. There is more to know. Yet this stuff preaches easy, but it's, it's difficult to live out. Because all of us can go back to moments in our life. Some of you can go right back to your childhood. You're a 40-year-old man, but you still have a moment in your childhood where somebody said something, somebody did something, an event, a circumstance took place, and you dealt with rejection, and it has marked you. I remember when I was young, maybe like 12 or 13, I had this I had this encounter with a family member of mine where I was, I was excited and I was saying, I one day I want to be a preacher. And I'll never forget my family member, like, they didn't celebrate it. Instead, they, they kind of were condescending and they were being sarcastic. And they probably didn't mean anything by it, but they just said, man, you can't preach. Come on, if you can preach, preach right now. I was like, well, I haven't prepared yet. <laughs> See, you, you got to make sure that when rejection hits you, you don't let it get in you. Because there's no escaping rejection. There's no escaping hearing the word no. If you're going to actually live your life to do something bigger than yourself, you should get used to hearing no, but you shouldn't let no stop you. It can hit you, but don't let it get in you. I remember an old parable that a preacher used to share. It's about two brothers who grew up in a home, and their dad was an alcoholic, and he was abusive. And the two brothers, they both grew up, and and one brother, he, he grew up to be an alcoholic, And an abuser himself, while the other brother, he abstained from alcohol and became a very moral man, a very good man, and accomplished many great things. They were both asked the same question, how did you end up the way that you are? And they both gave the same answer. Given who my dad was, how could I not? Two guys in the same home, with the same experience, yet one guy decided, I'm not going to let this thing get in me, while another man let it absolutely define him. I I, I don't know what's going to happen to you in life, and you can't dictate that, and you can't control that. All you get to control is how you respond to what happens to you in life. 